I um, okay. My my feelings about telefilm, I won't uh, go into because I want to be able to work in this industry. <laughs> it's an awful lot of people. Um, the thing I will say very carefully is that uh, first off, telefilm is fantastic. Like, talk to any American filmmaker, and they'll say you've got what? Like, wait a second, wait. So. You, the government will just give you money and you don't have to fucking make a profit. They'll just give it to you and you can lose all that fucking money and they don't give a shit. Wow. Canadians, you should get on your fucking hands and knees and thank Telefilm every day for just existing. So there's that. Thank you, Telefilm, for existing. There you go. There's the nice part of what I'm about to say. Um, um, I, I think that, first off, there's a lot, I think a lot of filmmakers, a lot of... Uh, Hmm. A lot of the established filmmakers would like it to be that binary, Bobby. They would like it to be like, <laughs> give the money to us because we're experienced. Don't give it to the people who don't know what the fuck they're doing because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And every filmmaker, and this is true of all filmmakers all over the world. You know, if you ask a filmmaker, how much money do you need to make your movie? They would say all of it, right? They would just go, mm -hmm. you know, a million's not enough, two million's not enough. Like, and yeah. ultimately the people handing out the money have to say, yeah, no, we're just going to give you a million. Like eventually someone had to say to George Lucas, no, seriously, dude, we're not giving you any more money. Make your fucking right. Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just had to fucking finish filming like immediately. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, I, I think that the experienced filmmakers have to realize that, um, you know, you're blessed to live in this country and to get the money in the first place and um, that there is enough money to go around and it just has to be redistributed. I think that the way Telefilm is dealing with it is like a bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. So I think that much like many granting industries, much like the Canada Council, much like ACTRA, much like a lot of places, you know, they're run by bureaucrats who are not artists. And that's just the way it has to be. That's just the way, since time immemorial, that's just the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. The artist, you don't want artists running organizations you want them making art because that's their job that's what they're supposed to do you know so ultimately they're run by bureaucrats and um they're and i've been through the talent to watch program two or three times that for those of you who don't know talent to watch is a program where they give money they give a little bit of money to young artists starting out which is exactly the way it should go like you should be you know, it's not it's not so much money that you could hang yourself and destroy your career. It's not enough money to to make, you know, the next uh, avatar. It's just enough to get your get your films made. You know, George Lucas needed to get his first movie out. Steve Spielberg, needed, you do. You don't even know the fucking name of the like, Sugarland Express. Have you fucking seen it? No, you haven't. You know, is it is it Jaws? No, it's not like it took Steven Spielberg a few films to make Jaws. So, you know, the Talent to Watch program is to give people a little bit of money and to go off and do something. I agree with you that, th that there is a problem with it being producer-based. Because what happens is when I apply for it, first off, as a person of color, applying for Talent to Watch, you need to find the, okay, there are organizations that will recommend you. So what Talent to Watch is, Telephone has his money. And then they go to other organizations and say, okay, you choose five people. And then from those five people, we'll choose two. And then from those two, we'll give money to one or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and uh, already that's a problem. <laughs> Secondly, uh, I know. Exactly. We lost Bobby. Yes, I know. The, creator, the, the creator grants too, right? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. And then uh, what happens is, so you've got all these organizations all across Canada, which makes sense. I understand it from a bureaucratic point of view. It's, it's sort of like passing the buck. So like, let's say Andrew Moody, little, little black Andrew Moody wants to get a talent to watch thing. Well, actually he's got to go to the black organization because the black organization is going to accept him. And the black organizations accepts all the applications from all the black people in the blackity black neighborhood of <laughs> all the blackness. So, and when I know, say this, <laughs> I, know, I know he's called racist. When I do it, it's fine. And I, you know, and and so, and it would be nice. It would be wonderful if the non-black organizations was re, were really open to people of color. It'd be great, but they're not. So, um, and I, sometimes understand so. Like sometimes a gay organization wants to support gay people of all different colors, or you know, a First Nations organization wants to support First Nations, which is fine. That's great. I How many Chinese Italian organizations are there? None. None. <laughs> This is why I get screwed again and again and again and again and again. Can can I just can I just say? I think it's a choice. Sure. 
Oh, and I, I, I literally just want to make a, a really dumb observation. What Andrew, when, when he was describing this very thing, it literally sounds like how the groups are formed in the workyard at a prison. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, so there's I think the, that's a there's good the gay people, and there's the black people, and there's the white people. Yeah, and so so what you have to have is you have to have, um, I, I think what we as artists need to do is we, we need to basically um, advocate for not, not only just for ourselves, but for other underrepresented groups. Right. So like... Um, when I, when, I was a, when I was a surrogate for gay guys, I could talk to straight people in a way that gay guys couldn't. Right. So I would talk about my experience of surrogacy um, and they would give me an ear in a way they wouldn't to a typical gay couple because they're, they're ignorant. It's not that they're racist, it's not that they're homophobic, it's that they're ignorant and they just don't know. And people are afraid of what they don't know. That's, that's See, what uh, my, my biggest fear right now is that we're devolving into this sort of segregationist society. And, you know, and maybe this is just opportunism or lack thereof, but I get fucking screwed all the time because I'm an actor who could pass for maybe native or Spanish but I'm not native or Spanish. So now we're in an industry where if you're not actually part of that community and you get cast that way, people get very angry. So mm -hmm. I don't get cast as native. I don't get cast as Spanish. I used to, now I don't. I don't even get cast as Asian because I'm only half. And so they will not cast me that way either. This is exactly why I think the system should be dismantled. I think it should be based on the fucking script. I think you should write a script. And the other problem I have with Talent to Watch is that you have to provide a producer that has no experience. Well, that's fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. So you're matching somebody who is a brand new writer with an, experience, uh, an inexperienced producer. I say, well, let's do the opposite. Let's get a really good script, find someone, find that really good script, yeah. have them ranked or whatever, and then say, hey, we're gonna give that really good script to a really powerful, experienced producer and we'll get, get it made and it'll be a great movie with a great... That's what, great. Can we, yeah, and can we also write, write material that is not reliant on race, sexuality, or, or anything else that, that you know, so, so that your, your, your lead can be whomever. The, whomever. The, the thing that Bobby described there, first of all, um, not getting booked, get in line, pal. Secondly, yeah, um, uh, I'm the mayor of that town. If you want to see what the number one looks like, go to my IMDb page. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, but the difference is the um, difference. Is, no, this is this is a debate, right? Because I'm not even eligible. No, that's the difference. Is that what, I'm not even fucking eligible to compete because right. I do not fit the basic minimum requirements of the demographic criteria. And right, this but, is why you have to do your own work, Bobby. The honest and I do. I do. I have, look. I have a great career, but. But because I have to fucking do everything myself. Now, what's funny is that in a way, I think that's why I'm actually able to get my project seen. And I'm getting international press for my new movie right now. And it's because I, I, I don't qualify for anything within the system. So I work outside the system. But because mm -hmm. the system is broken, I get more attention by working outside the system. But there's also, there's also this, this thing. And as you were describing this, it reminded me of something that, that happened in the not too distant past. Um, a whole bunch of people uh, decided that the sport of dwarf tossing uh, was kind of bad and mean. Um, so the, they socially justified this and went, no, 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 we can't have dwarf tossing. And uh, the, first, the first group that complained that you can't take away dwarf tossing was little people. Because the people who partook in dwarf tossing mm -hmm. money from that. And as degrading as it was, it went, no, this is a money maker for me. Don't you dare take this away from me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Dwarf tossing. Exactly. I honestly think that um it's like, you know, the way the system we have is the system we have. And I think it, it, to to your point, Todd, I think that, you know. Uh, a lot of, you know, the big producers are like, I know the system is broken, but it gives us money and it's all we've got. So let's just just keep the keep the coffers flowing. But I honestly um, think that it would be great to sort of completely dismantle telefilm and start from the ground up um, and just make it based on, uh, you know, I'm going to this is going to bite me in the ass one day. Uh -oh. But, you know, it's it, like start off with just 
the idea, the script, like just start off with something where it's really interesting so that it doesn't matter whether you're half Chinese, half Italian, doesn't matter whether you're this or that or whatever, like start off with like, is it a good script as an idea? And then does this script need $1.2 million or does it need $300,000 or does it need $100,000? Steve Soderbergh is doing stuff where he's just grabbing a camera and getting a mm -hmm. sound person and just making a movie. Well, and I, I think it's a difference too. So the people in, in power, like, uh, so I was just reading about the, you know, the up and coming holiday films and uh, Shonda Rhimes is doing, is producing a series called Bridgerton, which is based on romance novels written by Julia Quinn. And they are, uh, they are colorblind casting set in Regency, England. Uh, and, and there's, you know, everybody. And I was looking at the trailer and it looks like there are gay relationships. It looks like there are biracial relationships. And it's like, well, that is not historically accurate. <laughs> historically accurate. And Shonda Rhimes has made, has, has basically has a mission statement that she's going to change the status quo. And she has enough power that she can do that. Uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds decides that he wants to hire Indigenous people on his films, and he basically puts out a call and says, "I want you, if you are an Indigenous artist, I want you to apply for this project. I want you to I want to work with you on this project." And unfortunately, the people who have clout happen to be white. And happened to oh, happen. Oh, happen. Yeah. Like it wasn't yeah. like systematic. No. <laughs> Apart from what a shock. Yeah. What a well, shock that all, all those enslaved black people somehow don't have the same economic power in yeah. the United States. Somehow. Well, or or women who were not even even recognized as people until 1929. Okay. We vote right. before we were ex I basically accepted as being persons under the law. And that happened uh, and it w in 1940, it was when Quebec women were given the vote. After that, way after that, was when uh, Indigenous Canadians were given the vote, when Asian Canadians were given the vote after World War II, after they'd been in internment camps. Like, so there's a whole lot of shit that's been going on that is, is only now kind of settling, right? To, to your point, Heather, what was needed was people at the top like Shonda Rhimes and Ryan Russell saying, you know what, I've got lots of wealth, let's share it. The Canadian filmmakers at the top in Canada Socialism! Right now, Socialism! Oh my God, how dare you say the S word? No. Here's the thing. Because it's terrifying in the United States, to go back to that. But they're so afraid of socialism as if, it's, as if socialism is a bad thing. We we need uh, artists at the top who are are just as activists, and we just I just don't see them. I just I think that a lot of oh this could bite me in the ass. I just think you know. Um, what an ass bite fair, today, like, Andrew. There are a lot of good. People. What was that? I said there's a lot of something ass biting over there. It's over, really something over that you're kind of like. Yeah. No, it's just I know that somebody's gonna watch this. Is it your chair? It might be your chair. We're just about to give Andrew Moody some money from telephone. Wait, what did he say about us? Uh, <laughs> what can we Everybody's take Everybody's debating telephone right now. I mean, uh, the mainstream media, if the mainstream media even still exists, but they're they're starting to debate these issues more openly. And But, you know, for me, I think that what artists need to understand, this is my own personal philosophy, is that the option to work outside the system is still there. Yeah. And personally, I think it's a better fucking option. 